Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome to my hobby blog. Today I'm excited to show my latest Blu-ray boutique haul that I got. Um, one of which I have had for a few days now and then my Criterion sale haul came in. So I'm very excited to finally show that because I have a lot of great titles here. And I actually just already recorded this and I was messing around with the settings, messing with the countdown because my computer is way over there now. So I have to press play over there and then walk all the way around and sit down. And stupidly, I was messing with the countdown because I wanted to press play, wait five seconds, sit down and stop recording. Well, I fucked up in that I kept it on to where after zero seconds it would turn off again. And so I am absolutely uh, kind of mad about it, but I'm just going to have to go faster than I did last time because that was about 30 minutes of me talking. And so a little upset right now, but um, the first movie I want to talk about is a film from... 2006 by David Lynch. This is one that I am absolutely excited to finally have. I haven't seen it. This is the second to last David Lynch film that I need to see to be complete. And also, this is the second last film to have in my collection of David Lynch's before I have a complete David Lynch collection. And I'm very excited to say that I have David Lynch's maybe masterpiece because I hear quite divisive things on this one. Inland Empire. This is a movie that I have not seen. I know nothing about. All I know is that it is a sort of art experimental film. And all I know uh, from the special features is that Laura Dern and Kyle MacLachlan have a conversation on this release, a new one all about this film. And I had no idea Cal McLaughlin was even in this film. So I'm excited to go through this and see what I have been missing for all these years. Because I have not wanted to be a part of the conversation. Because I just haven't seen it yet. And there were no Blu-rays. There were no physical releases. It was somewhat hard to watch. And I know everybody really hates the camcorder quality that is on this release well, not this release but on this film but this release has such a extensive uh, restoration project or process and they took about two years to restore this and then they showed it and they have side by side uh, comparisons on I think the website where they posted about this uh, process and it is night and day different. So I'm very excited to go through this film and as a new watcher and as a longtime appreciator of David Lynch. So this is Inland Empire by David Lynch. The next film that I got for this really, uh, soul, or from this hall, uh, cell hall, I apologize, is a 1994 film. Uh, one that has been getting a lot of hype lately, be, at least in the Boutique Blu-ray uh, Discord that I'm a part of. And I'm a big fan of blind buys because I always enjoy treading new ground that I've never tread before. And this one seems pretty good. Uh, I, I haven't read up on anything. I read a review by a friend and it said the less you know about it, the better. So I took that to heart, uh, which I usually do anyways. I usually never look up anything about movies before I watch them, which burns me a lot uh, with blind buys. But this one, enough people who I trust gave it four and a half to five stars. Now I'm talking about the film from 1997, Exotic Her. It's actually 1994, I apologize. But this is a film that I know nothing about and I'm not going to read the back. So to know that I have it is really all that needs to be done. Uh, known because I may do a review on this. I don't know. But I'm excited to check that out finally. And this next movie that I have here is a Terry Gilliam uh, film that I really, really enjoy and borderline love. But there's a lot of slow parts that really weigh it down. And also, uh, Sarah Polly was almost killed multiple times as a eight, nine-year-old girl 
working on this uh, production. And I'm talking about, of course, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, uh, 19... 1988 film by Terry Gilliam. I love this movie. I've seen it only once uh, a couple years ago. I think it was one of the last films that I'd rented for my school library. And I'm excited to have this. Daisuke Beppu, who is an amazing YouTube reviewer, he had a lot of really good things to say about this release and said that the interviews especially are so, so good as they uh, illuminate everything about the film and inform the viewer a lot of what went, went on behind the scenes. So I'm excited to rewatch this. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen by Terry Gilliam. And this next film here that I got is a Kiyoshi Kurosawa film, who I'm a pretty big fan of. I've only seen, I think, two other films by him aside from this one, but this one I have not seen. Uh, I believe Pulse is one that he did, and I love that one. I just rewatched it a couple weeks back for a series that I will be doing soon, but this movie will be part of that, uh, which I'm really excited to unveil for you guys. But this is the film from 1997. Kyo. I know nothing about this. I'm, I'm still testing out this format, but uh, this looks close enough. But I'm very excited to finally check this out because this is one of, at least from reputation, one of the best Japanese horror films of all time, or at least thriller films. I don't know what the story is of this movie and what the synopsis is, but um, I am a huge lover of Japanese cinema. I don't think that's a secret. I do a lot of Japanese reviews, and this one I'm very excited to get into soon uh, with my new series that I have planned. But this is Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Kyo. One of the few blind buys that I did for uh, this haul. And this next one is actually a double dip for me because I have the Kino Lorba release, which did not go well at all for anybody involved. For the director, David Lynch, for Kino Lorba, who were handling the release, and then the viewers who got the most bare bones release of this film. And the film I'm talking about today is one that I have a lot of history with. This is uh, Lost Highway. I was going to tell the story first, but I want to sh give you guys sort of some engagement first. This is the 1997 film Lost Highway, which I already have on Kino Lorber's Blu-ray, which I can finally get rid of. But this was one of the first court films that I ever saw in my life. Uh, outside of uh, whatever my dad showed me on TV, and I didn't understand what it was. This was one of the first ones that I deliberately chose at the age of 8 or 9 when Netflix DVD became a thing. I guess I was 9 to 10 years old when that happened because I was a huge, or well, I still am, a huge Rammstein fan. And the entire uh, musicology, I guess, is so well done. And this film uh, features one of my favorite songs, uh, Rammstein, uh, which is a song from the first album, uh, Hurts the Light, uh, which is English for heartbreak. And uh, this movie is so, so confusing for me. I remember watching it when I was a nine or 10 year old kid with my dad. And I, and I was watching it because it had that song in the movie. And it played, and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, you know? But the rest of the movie, I was like, what the hell is going on? And you have, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Bill something. Bill Pullman, who, I grew up on Spaceballs, okay? That was one of the most influential, or at least effective films of my time. Uh, not my time, but it, it influenced me a lot. Uh, I still watch it yearly. Is one of my favorite movies, and I remember watching it for the first time, being like, oh my god, it's uh, not Star-Lord. How the fuck did that name come up? It's, um... Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot his name. Lone Star! 
I remember watching Lost Highway and be like, oh my god, there's Lone Star. Like, it was so exciting for me as a kid. And I watched it and I was like, what the fuck is going on? But whatever, there's a weird, creepy guy with the camera filming people when they're asleep. And uh, Bill Pullman is in it. And you see uh, Marilyn Manson at some point in this film. And he's singing a song. And you also have Nine Inch Nails and all the sorts of stuff. Now, I remember watching the making of on YouTube way back in the day when YouTube first came out in like 2007. Uh, so I guess I was about 10 years old when that came out. And I remember watching David Lynch having a stereo on set uh, during one of the parts where Bill Pullman is walking down the highway and the flames all around him. And he's walking down the hallway and, he's, and David Lynch is blasting the song Rammstein by Rammstein. And I remember, I was like, oh my God, is that how they make movies? Like, they just do this? And, you know, it was really exciting for me. And uh, I guess my life changed from there on out a lot more than I thought it would. I guess uh, Last Highway was sort of the watershed moment for me, for me uh, growing up. But I'm very excited to finally have a definitive edition of David Lynch's masterpiece. Lost Highway. Next, we have another masterpiece film from a director who I greatly, greatly appreciate. And I am talking about uh, Akira Kurosawa's 1963 film, uh, High and Low. And one of the main reasons I got this is because I'm tired of waiting for a Blu ray upgrade to that box set of his. Because I am, as you can see, I have a lot of movies, and I like it when I can combine a lot of different movies that is by a particular director or actor or whatever and put them into one package. And I was really waiting for about the last five or six years for that, and I just got tired of it. I said, okay, I still need high and low. I still need uh, all the DVD releases they have, which I'm not going to get yet because I'll wait for the Blu-ray. It's fine. Uh, whether it's region B or not, but um, this is one that has been on my mind a lot lately because one of my favorite films uh, is a South Korean thriller called Secret Sunshine by Lee Cheng Dong. And that movie is a direct adaptation of High and Low, but goes in a totally different direction. And I really enjoy uh, sort of the aspects that you can recognize in Secret Sunshine through High and Low. And so I really want to revisit High and Low because it's been a few years. I really enjoy Toshiro Mifune's uh, performance in this one. It's a lot uh, more toned down than his previous ones in Seven Samurai, Hidden uh, Fortress, uh, Rashomon, uh, Yoshimbo. I mean, all these great films that he's been in. He's always been... Uh, sort of bombastic, uh, a demand, not demanding, but a commanding presence on screen. And this one, he's a lot more subtle and very well done in this one. And I can't wait to revisit High and Low. Uh, I may do a double feature with uh, Secret Sunshine. I don't know yet, but... This next film that I got is one that's uh, from 1967, which directly influenced George Romero who is very important, in my opinion, to this haul, because George Romero is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time, obviously. I did an entire ranking of him, of all his films, with my dear friend Will, and this is one that I was introduced to in his class, in the George Romero class that I took, that he taught, and we watched the first five minutes of this, which is just absolutely uh, powerful to watch, especially in the sense that this is a 1960s film. And seeing how similar this movie is to George Romero's Season of the Witch, or Jack's Wife, I believe it's called, uh, the alternate title of it, uh, is so fascinating, fascinating to me. But I haven't seen this movie in a very long time since... I first started collecting, so 2016, 2017, so it's been about five to six, six to seven years, oh my god, since I've seen this one. 
and I'm talking about Catherine Deneuve's uh, Belle de Joy. Uh, this movie is absolutely amazing. I really enjoy this one. It's one of the few uh, sort of French films that I know. I'm not a big fan through no means of the films themselves, but I'm not a big fan of 1940s, or I guess 1950s to 1970s French films because I haven't seen any. I am not a, I'm not knowledgeable at all in this uh, period or even in the country. I haven't seen many French films outside of, uh, is Gaspar Noé a French director? That's really the only French films that I've seen is by him. But this is one that I really, really enjoy. Uh, it's very interesting. It's very erotic, surreal, absurd. Um, but I highly recommend watching the first five minutes of this movie and definitely the rest of it. But uh, definitely the first five minutes and then contrasting that with Season of the Witch by George Romero. It is fascinating. This is Belle de Joy. And the next film that I got is one by a director who I really enjoy, and I had no idea that this had a Blu-ray release until I randomly saw uh, the director's name, Tani Chikawa, on the image that they had on the Criterion website. And this is the film by Tani Chikawa from 1983, The Makioka Sisters. This is a drama all about siblings who are married and the youngest two are not married and that the fourth uh, daughter cannot marry until the third daughter is married but the third daughter is very conserv conservative and very shy so she doesn't really want to get married or is at least in no hurry to get married but that's really all i know about this movie and i'm very excited to finally watch this but this movie will also be part of the series that i will be doing quite soon probably sometime in April, where I will be going through a particular set of films and giving my impressions of them and sort of giving a intro to X uh, series uh, on my channel. So this will be part of that, The Makioka Sisters by Connie Chikawa. And then next we have a newer film that I have not seen yet, but which I'm very excited to finally see because this is one that everybody has been recommending. Uh, one of my good friends who I've known since kindergarten, he is a huge uh, fan of this movie and he's a musician who uh, said that this film really hit him harder than he ever thought it would. And so I'm very excited to finally peep The Sound of Metal. Uh, this movie is about a drummer who is slowly uh, losing his hearing. And so he has to sort of continue drumming, but under an entire different set of circumstances that he is not used to. That's all I know about the movie. I heard it was absolutely devastating and to watch it with headphones on because there's no other way to watch uh, such a heavy sound-based film without great sound so this is the sound of metal release i think 2019 yes it's a two hour film comes with lots of special features very excited for this one and the last criterion edition that i got from this sale is going to be a film by kaisuke kinoshita this is one that i have seen a number of times throughout school that i really enjoy but i have been wanting to rewatch it because I don't really have any lasting memories of it. And this is from 1958, so it's part of that sort of golden age of Japanese cinema. This is The Ballad of Narayama. I really enjoy this movie. This is a pretty emotional movie. There's some weird parts in the beginning of the movie that I don't particularly like. But um, this one is so, so good. Uh... I just can't remember too much, so I can't speak to it too much. But there is a Arrow, I think, Academy release uh, that includes this release. It's the three films by Shohei Imamura. And 
maybe this is not part of that box set, but I swear it was. But um, I, I'll this will probably be part of that series that I do. Uh, starting next month, so just to give you guys a tease for that. But the Ballad of Narayama, so so good. Can't remember too much about it, so I apologize. But last but definitely not least is one of my favorite films of all time. A masterpiece of the genre and definitely the best by this director. And this is a film that is deeply important to me because this is the almost the last uh, of my favorites by this director that I don't have on Blu-ray, let alone 4K. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about George Romero. And this is a very stacked release, so I need two hands to hold this up. And I'm taking my time explaining it because I'm so, so excited to finally have this. This is his lost, in terms of physical media uh, releases, didn't have a Blu-ray, didn't have a 4K for a very long time. Maybe a DVD. This is the film by George Romero, 1979, I want to say. I apologize. I'm looking for the... Okay, I don't know what you yeah, don't say immediately, but this is Martin. I am absolutely excited to finally have this. This is one of my most uh, wanted releases that I have been wanting for many years. Uh, just look at how thick that uh, booklet and everything is. That is... This is now my prize jewel for uh, my collection. And I really love the artwork of the razor blade that cuts and draws blood, but it's shaped like the uh, vampire's teeth to reflect Nosferatu, uh, which his uncle or cousin calls uh, Martin. And Martin is played by John Amplis. This is John Amplis' best role or performance, in my opinion. He is so well done in this. Uh, I was talking about in my original recording of this video how everybody should watch uh, John Amplis and uh, Night Riders, where he plays the Jester, and compare that performance to this one because it's very similar, but George Romero gave the entire movie to John Amplis on this release. Not this release, but this film. And Tom Savini also has a pretty major performance or character in this one that I really love because he plays a young hip preacher in this and he is so funny and also very melancholy and I really love uh, sort of the dialogue in this movie between Tom Savini, Martin and Tom Savini's girlfriend I believe or fiance but this movie is just so powerful one of the best by George Romero this is Martin. So that is it for the haul. And I hope it recorded this time because I'm not going to record it again. I'll just post it on Instagram next time. But thank you so much for watching and please have a great rest of the night.